Commissioner, you have the floor. Thank you very much, and also thank you, Margaritis, for good cooperation on this. Um, today, uh, we, together with the Security Union Strategy, uh, we also present uh, three uh, specific uh, proposals. It's the EU strategy for, uh, to fight uh, um, child sexual abuse. It's the EU action plan for firearms trafficking, and it's the EU drugs agenda and action plan. And there is urgent need for European response. On child sexual abuse online, the last five years, we have seen Europe become the epicenter of hosted materials of child sexual abuse. On drugs, Europe is moving from a consumer region to also being a producer region, resulting in increased influence and reach for organized crime groups. We are exporting uh, drugs from Europe today. And on firearms, we have uh, quite good legislation, but it has not been implemented fully in the EU member states, and there's a lot more to do on this. But I will start with the fight against child sexual abuse and the strategy we are presenting today. Marguerite has talked about the fundamental uh, uh, rights. We also have a fundamental obligation to protect children. I think this is both, uh, of course, in real life and online. The child sexual abuse uh, material online uh, is um, increasing dramatically, exponentially. We have seen since the last nine years globally the rise from 1 million detected materials to 17 million detected materials. In European Union, more than 700,000 detected materials was reported last year. And then, of course, there's also a lot that are not being reported and detected. So, and we also know that the situation has worsened during the pandemic with a lot of children uh, alone, home, uh, online, but also we can see an increased activity from pedophiles. The online abuses are becoming more sophisticated in sharing, in hiding, and worse, creating new materials. It works like this in these uh, closed communities for pedophiles, that to be able to enter, to be able to look at the materials that they share there, you have to provide new materials. Otherwise, you're not allowed. And that means they have to do new rapes or new videos or new abuses to be able to see the old ones. Last year, we detected 100,000 new videos in the European Union. And additional to that, a lot of pictures, of course. So, of course, we don't know if they've been produced exactly that year, but probably. So this is really, uh, uh, there's uh, real children that are being abused by this. Over the last five years, the hosting of the materials has shifted. So now two thirds of these materials are being hosted in European Union, specifically in the Netherlands. And that's why I'm very happy to have a very good cooperation with the Dutch minister, Grepperhaus, that is fighting this problem together. But we need to have sharper tools. And the most important is to detect, to report, to remove, and to refer. We are announcing today that next year, the Commission will propose new legislation to make it mandatory for relevant internet and social media messaging companies to detect, to report, and to remove materials, and to refer them to appropriate uh, authorities. Detection of abuse is an essential part of the process, because this can lead to victims being saved. And it works like this, that when we got the materials, the reports to Europol, for example, they start investigating and controlling this. And they are able, together with the national police forces, to uh, identify the children being abused right now and being able to save them. And this is really, for example, we had a nine-year-old girl in Romania who'd been abused by her father for more than one year that could be saved through this work with Europol and the national police forces. That's why it's so important with the responsibility for the online uh, companies. 
Their detection and reporting starts the investigation, which lead to the rescue of children and to prosecution of offenders. Recent examples in German case revealing potentially 30,000 suspects and another recent massive in investigation in Italy show the value of strong reporting mechanism and quick cooperation. Both these examples show the effectiveness of detection and subsequent reports to the US-based National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, NECMEC. They uh, gathered the material and then reported to Europol. Now we propose that also time for us to have uh, uh, the same kind of center to prevent and counter child sexual abuse also in Europe and to have better coordination and better and faster response uh, and help to member states. And this new center will also work with the expertise of prevention because this is the absolutely the most important, to prevent these abuse and rapes from happening in the first place. So this will be a role for the new center, but we already right now set up or create a prevention network in the European Union. We also need to help victims to uh, support them, because this could be a lifelong trauma of being uh, to seeing these materials living on the internet a long uh, time after the actual abuse. And then uh, we also, we know that very often the, the children victims are often being abused by somebody in their family or somebody that they trust. And part of the abuse is to threatening the children not to tell anybody. So this is also an area where we need to do more to create good practice, how children can be able to report uh, these abuse going on. So this was on the strategy on uh, fighting child sexual abuse. We also present today EU drugs agenda and an action plan. So use, uh, the business of drugs is the biggest resource of money to the organized criminal groups in the European Union. And they use this money to do corruption, to pay for murders and a lot of other crimes. And this is a huge, huge uh, business. Today we have uh, uh, 5,000 organized crime groups in the European Union. Last year, we were able to seize 100 tons of cocaine. You can imagine how big this is. And of course, there's also a lot of, of drugs that we have not been able to seize. And we have seen uh, now that we are producing the synthetic drugs in a business scale. Uh, in an industrial scale in the European Union. So that's why we need to fight this battle. So we are presenting also an action plan that we have 53 concrete actions that we will do together to fight uh, uh, the drugs. And finally, also a few words on the EU action plan of firearms trafficking. We have been working uh, successfully together with the Western Balkan to uh, fight firearms trafficking and we will continue doing that. But today we have 35 million illicit weapons owned by civilians in the European Union. And that's more than that's legally owned by civilians in the European Union. So this is, of course, a very important way also to uh, disrupt the work or the actions for the organized uh, crimes, criminal groups. So these are part of what we are presenting today. And I must say that it's very timely to do this because we can see the organized criminal groups and the child sexual abuse have been in, in growing during the pandemic. So it's very timely that we can present these new concrete actions today. Thank you.